Make that big boss less special It ain't no game, but they say I'm Welcome to the second level Hello, Internet, and welcome back, or welcome to Indy. Please add details. Episode 20, we're one away from being able to legally drink in the United States. I know in other countries it is younger, but in the U.S. it is 21. You can fight in a war, but you cannot drink alcohol. True that. Uh, my name's Keegan, one half of Level 2 Gamers, hanging out with Tom, the other half of Level 2 Gamers. How are you doing today, Tom? I'm grand. I'm cold, and your beef jerky stinks. Yeah, That's my jerky kind of smells right real now. bad. I'm uh, in uh, the middle of a freezing cold beef jerky <laughs> hellhole. Other than that... It snowed yesterday. Yeah, it did. I didn't go outside. I yeah. stayed inside the lady. The lady, I ordered Jimmy John's for lunch, and she goes, you made a right, the right choice. <laughs> so I was like, I know. Yeah, I'm it's uh, right now, actually, where we are, there's a, like, a uh, wind chill advisory. Mm-hmm. So they're basically saying, like, this thing when I, from our weather advisory board saying you need multiple layers or you might die. Uh, I don't think you'll die, but. Well, you, I mean, depending you, on your you age and stuff, you know. Lose some fingers, some limbs. Cold. Anybody can die in the cold, but I don't think True, it's that but cold. all people are more I've been in negative 40, so. Yeah, that's that's cold. So yeah, but it's it's really fucking cold. Uh, other than that, grand. Cool. This is Indie Please Add Details, our weekly dip into the world of indie games and indie developers, where we discuss the news and our excursions throughout the week, topping it all off with a topic of discussion that you can join down in the comments below, or you can hit us up on Twitter or uh, on uh, Discord. The link for Discord is in the description. Twitter is Level Two Gamers STL. You can listen to us on your favorite podcast services: Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud. Uh, iTunes. I'm like I always miss I always miss iTunes because I hate the app now. I don't listen to many podcasts anymore because the app sucks. Uh, so I'm still looking for an alternative. Um, or you see our lovely faces at level2gamers.com and a bunch of additional stuff. You'll see the trailers behind us if you watch us on there, or you can see our lovely studio that I hate to break it to you, it's fake. People are always amazed when I tell them that it's a green screen behind us. Uh, but if but if you are listening on audio, you're not missing anything. We'll d- we'll talk about everything. You get the and same the experience. The descriptions will be in the, the links uh, will be in the, the links will be in the descriptions. Yes. Correct. So if you want to check out those trailers or whatever, then you can watch them. Absolutely. So let's move on to detail number one. Sure. And again, what would be indie? Please add details without, without PUBG. PUBG. So we played PUBG. <clears throat> we have finally twice. Ooh. Well, you played it more, but like on stream, we've played it twice. Correct. I've played it. More as well. Yeah. Um, so, despite bugs and issues, PUBG he- hits three million uter- uter- user users. As I say, units <laughs> and users hits three million <laughs> users on Xbox One. Users. I was, I, I, I was, was going to say units, but I knew that was wrong. So I like, tried to change it to users, and it just didn't oh. work out. Uh, PUBG launched on Xbox One and Game Preview Program one month ago this week. After, this is from GameSpot, by the way. After picking up 1 million players in its first 48 hours, the popular Battle Royale game has reached more than 3 million players by the end of 2017, Microsoft announced today on the Xbox Wire. The unfinished game is available for $30. Unlike other game preview titles, PUBG on Xbox One does not offer a free trial, which may have helped improve sales. If the three million players come out, or if the three million players come out to three million copies sold at thirty dollars a piece, that would be ninety million dollars in revenue. Mm. It's unclear if this Before makes PUBG release. the most successful game preview game ever. Other than it, others included Ark Survival Evolved and Conan Exiles. Conan is actually a lot of fun, though we suspect it might be the case. PUBG for Xbox One had its fair share of launch issues, and the game, which again is unfinished, is still not completely smooth. Nope. PUBG, but PUBG developer. PUBG Corp. has released a handful of updates already that have improved the overall, overall experience. New features have come online, too, including first-person support for solo, dual, and squad modes. More updates are planned for the time ahead, while the new map, Myrmar, is also on the way. There's no word as yet to when PUBG will lease, re- leave the game preview program on Xbox One and launch its 1.0 version. The PC was in early access on Steam for around nine months before it launched on 1.0 in December. That's exciting. I think the important thing to point out here is it's not just 3 million players. I believe it's 3 million concurrent players as well. So no, people just 3 million players. I thought it was concurrent because more people bought the machine. Because I, I was reading, because it's funny you mentioned this. This morning I was reading about... Um, PC had 3 million concurrent players. Oh, that might be why yeah. I read it. But, um, P- it's the number one game. It, it's beaten Dota. It's beaten League. Like It's the number one game right now. But the um, the other one, but ex- this what's is it called? Fortnite? Fortnite? Yeah. 
Royale, 50-50 Royale, whatever. Battle Royale. Uh, that has 2 million concurrent players mm -hmm. on console right now, which, uh, and they were they were put it, pitting it against this and saying, you know, PUBG has 3 million. And, and well, the other thing, you have to two. think Battle Royale is on all three consoles. Or all free two consoles. As well. Yeah. So, um, so, so it yeah. does help. But it's, it, I thought it was an interesting. We will be playing that too. Oh, I mean, yeah. we, we've got that, that. On, our, on our list. Uh, David, I told you before we started recording, but David and Brian were both like, you need to play this. I'm not a big fan of the whole crafting thing, but if I can just sh go around and shoot things, I'm fine. But they said that was the coolest part. So one of the cool things was like they were being chased by people and they were building tower, like sniper towers to hang out in and stuff mm. like that. So you can build your own structure yeah. to hang out in. I don't know. We'll see. No, you will make you. I'm going to tie you down and I'm going to force you to build a sniper tower. <laughs> Because you'll have your sniper rifle. Well, if I get a sniper rifle, I'll consider uh, it. But I'm excited for, for this. PUBG, as we know, we both have played, like I said. It's not great. It's still got a lot of issues. I think it's fun for the most part. I think the hardest, and it sucks because it's uh, it's a primarily shooter game, but the hardest part of the game is shooting. Yeah. Like, the yeah, running around, the menu wrong. stuff is all yeah. right. I really think, to me, it's the double tap the left trigger. That throws me off. Well, it's that. And I the think. aiming is. And yeah, really like, wonky. it's weird. Like, I don't feel like, I mean, I'm going to, like, not talk about this a whole lot because the spotlight I mm -hmm. have for this week. But uh, I th I feel like the clunkiness of the, of the actual aiming and moving and stuff, like, it's a little, it's just not smooth. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a Call of Duty or a Battlefield or one of those games where, even though it is a giant open map or whatever, like, Battlefield has some pretty huge maps, but everything still feels pretty smooth, like, shooting-wise. You don't feel handicapped by lag or by, you know, like, when I see a player in PUBG, I duck. I shouldn't be doing that. I should be shooting right away and being confident in the fact that I was going to kill them. But I'm so like not oh, confident at how shitty it is that I duck. Welcome to my time. life playing video games in general with shooters. I just right hide I feel like and normally and I'm like oh, I'm a, I'm I'll, a just, I'll get in there, but I'm too scared, and that's and that's partially my fault, I guess, and partially the the game mechanics. So yeah, but we'll we'll get into that. We'll cool. Get into that. Don't worry. Detail number two, Faye from EA. Is coming to Switch <clears throat> February 16th. This is from the Nintendo Direct Mini. Did you watch the Nintendo Direct Mini? I did not. I caught the highlights. Uh, you told me about it. Yeah, there was a lot of things. Dark Souls, Dark Souls remaster mm. was announced. Uh, new Kirby stuff. Kirby Amiibos. But the for Kirby us... Thing, the Kirby game looks cool. Oh, well, like Kirby looks the awesome. Luigi update for Odyssey. That looks interesting. Yes. You get to hide the balloons. Yep. Um, yeah, everything looked pretty sweet. But yeah, Faye... For us, Faye for is us, the only thing that really... We've been looking forward to that regardless yeah. of console. But the fact it's on Switch, I, I would pick it yep, up there. The only, the only issue I have have right now and i now i used to be such an apologist for these people but the the more and more that ea does things the more and more i realize that like we say as gamers you talk with your wallet and i talked with my wallet on battlefront and i'm like no I a lot of people did but uh one way out ca phase ea um all the sports games i play are ea so it's really hard for me to not want to be like no, because he has so many things. But I think you can talk with your wallet per game because that's going to help them know yeah. what shit we'll take and what we won't. Because like, if you if you're looking at Battlefront and you're saying I'm not going to buy this because ABC, then they know why they didn't get your money that time. But they also know that if you go out and buy Madden or whatever, that you're essentially saying this is I this buy I'm Madden because they have the exclusive license, which is yeah. stupid. Well, you know. But you could say, like, th I'm buying this because it's acceptable to me that you can do the practices that you're doing on this game, and I yeah. will give you money. That way they know that you would have put your money on Battlefront had they not been had they greedy not bastards. Done yeah, done it wrong. Yeah. So, yeah, FaZe coming out of the Switch November, or November, February 16th. Uh, yeah, that would suck if it was that long. <laughs> <laughs> When's it, I assume it comes out the same day then on con on the uh, unsure. PS4. Unsure, I assume so. I that would makes imagine sense. so. Yeah. I would imagine so. Detail number three, former Drive Club and MotorStorm devs open Wushu Studios working on a new sci-fi uh, IP. Interesting. So, let me repeat that. Change of gears. Former Drive Club and MotorStorm. Those are those are driving games, Tom. They are. Those are vehicular games. Yeah. Uh, they're working we, on it. What is it? A sci-fi driving IP? I don't know, but this is from DualShockers. Biker Today, Mice from Mars. Remember that? We got a reveal. Huh? Biker Mice from Mars? I never heard of it. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. Today we got a reveal of a new independent team named Wushu Studios based in Liverpool. That's that's your home country. Sure is. Not your not where you're from, no, but I'm that's your home country. So. Uh, that was founded in August 2017 and is finally getting on the map with the tease of its first project. While the studio is relatively new, its members current or certainly are not novices. At the helm are founder Alan McDermott, formerly of Evolution Studios and Sony Interactive Entertainment. Those are kind of big things. Designer N Nigel Kershaw 
who also previously worked on Ev- Evolution Studios and PlayStation, in addition to Deep Silver and Revolution Software, and art director Stuart Trevor, who shares the Evolution Studios and PlayStation pedigree. So it sounds like they kind of all came together. Mm. Deep Silver is not uh, the guys that did Dead Island, was it? Maybe. Something Silver. Deep Silver has done a few things. Right. The studio currently includes 11 developers and expanding, aiming to create games with interesting mechanics, u- unique concepts to deliver fun, refreshing gameplay experiences to players. The most generic so, sentence I've ever read in my life. So what's their first title? Wushu Studios is currently working on a new sci-fi EP, or I keep saying EP, IP. <laughs> They're making a new album, a sick album, Tom. <laughs> yeah. They started prototyping in September 2017 using Unreal Engine 4. McDermott himself has accompanied the press release with a statement, our core team at Wushu has worked worked together closely on numerous projects over the years, so there was no downtime in figuring out how to work together. We just fell straight into groove kicking around game idea into the groove kicking around game ideas that appeals to <clears throat> us as players and developers. We firmly believe in the idea that our initial concepts needed to be gamepad experiences. That means console possibility as quickly as possible, so we turned to Unreal Engine. For, for half its a amazing second, I thought you meant the Wii U gamepad. No. I was like for its amazing guys. prototyping capabilities, this approach has helped us figure out which helped us figure out which of our concepts would allow to flex our creative muscles. It's definitely not what people will be expecting to see from us. It's absolutely not. I repeat, absolutely not a racing game. Yeah. End good. quote. There you go. Answers that question. So, it's not a racing game. So, I'm, what what do you think this is? Do you think this is like a Mass Effect style game? Do you think it's just a Hmm. I mean that we don't have much to go on. We don't have any. We have well, we have we have <coughs> sci-fi, but sci-fi can be an RPG. I hate can to be shit a, on racing games, and I and there are some really good ones. Dude, don't shit on racing games. Racing games are my heart and soul. Well, no, I'm not gonna not gonna like shit shit on them. Do you think it's a VR game? No, what I'm saying is that racing games are, and don't kill me, devs that do racing games, but they are probably more simplistic in nature than trying to make Mass Effect, right? Like mm-hmm. you make a racing game, you make your tracks, you make your cars, you make the physics work, and then go. But um, you know how hard it is to make physics in a racing game. Yeah, I know. That I'm are not, I'm not good. belittling it. I know it's difficult. I know I couldn't do it. But I'm saying that compare that to you know Mass Effect, where they have like not only like different planet-sized uh, you know places they have to do that are you know obviously a lot bigger than a racing track, but also they have cars in Mass Effect, they have vehicles in Mass Effect, they have gunplay to consider, they have movement to consider, they have you know story to consider, which you don't really get in a racing game either. So I think um, I I I know that Drive Club and uh, Motorstorm were really good, solid games. Yes. So I'm confident that they could pull something really good off. Uh, but I just like I don't know how ambitious they're going to be with this title, knowing that their previous experience is sort of on the lower scale of time. But it doesn't have to be a big title. I'm just my 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 question was not is it going to be Mass Effect? Like it's not going to be Mass Effect. But what do you think? Yeah, what genre do you think they potentially would go for? Because sci-fi, I, I think they do third. Because I don't because I don't think you should do. I don't think you should do another sci-fi RPG because there's so many fucking sci-fi RPGs out there. I, if they're going to do. And quote, hold on, where's this quote? Aiming to creating games with interesting mechanics, unique concepts, and to deliver fun, refreshing gameplay experiences to players. Well, if it's refreshing, then it's not going to be a rehash. But, like, I don't I don't think it'll be an RPG, no. I do think it'll be third person. I don't think they're going to do go first person, because I think going from racing to first person might be difficult. And You race in first person. Yeah. Every racing game has a first person experience. Yeah, well, maybe they'll do it then. But, I mean, they're, whole, they're a completely different ball game, though. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So I don't know whether they would focus. I think they do third person. I think they would probably end up doing something that looks more maybe like a narrative. I'm gonna. Tale. I was gonna say because I'm thinking because so, Sony. I'm thinking story based. Yeah, I'm thinking Lost Planet. I'm thinking uh, what if it's Dead Space, what if they what if know? they do like a walking not a walking sim per se but like walking sim style story elements with a little bit more like action involved. So I'm thinking like uh, like what remains of Edith Finch. It's you're walking around. That's all you do, but it's got a few things in there that twist it up. That might happen, yeah. Like a, something like a drift or something. Yeah. Less of a weird mechanic. Or a Tacoma. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I mean, I I'm thinking that. it would potentially be similar to that, but you obviously can't do then Tacoma again. My head's in a space of it looking more like Lost Planet uh, than Tacoma, but I don't know. Do you ever play Lost Planet? Mm-mm. It, I mean, it was a sci-fi thing, but it was like you were, you would go on different planets, and, and it was almost like mixing a game like Mass Effect with a game like Monster Hunter, but mm-hmm. with sci-fi stuff instead of like monsters. Uh, but they were still kind of monsters. I don't know. 
Hard to explain. So, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm thinking more of a Lost Planet type thing. Uh, but we'll see, I guess. I mean, there's no way to know until they hurry up and release the fucking thing. So, uh, or at least talk about it. The progress of the prototype, though, has been extremely positive. So that's always good. Always good to hear. It's always good to hear. Uh, also, PR, uh, Shinobi602 is their PR person. You probably don't know who that is, but that is a big is. PR. They used to do things for uh, Sony. He used to do things for uh, Square. I think back when before they were Square Enix as well. Uh, mm. Square Soft is that what they used to? They used to be Square Soft, mm-hmm. right? I believe. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. I'm actually I've actually got the website pulled up to to contact these guys uh, when we're yeah, done. Yeah, I mean I'm definitely. But uh, I'm in, I'm intrigued to see I'm what it is. Uh, cautiously up to. I'm guarantee it's gonna be a PS4 because they have PlayStation guys. Like it, it would be dumb for the, I think it would be dumb for them not to do it because they said gamepad experience. So I bet you they're gonna. It makes sense for indie deve- developers to go across all platforms unless they get some sort of kick in from one of them. Mm. Uh, so I have a feeling it'll be a PlayStation One, which makes me happy because that's my that's my out. that's my platform of choice. Mm. So moving on to detail number four, Stardew Valley creator teases multiplayer Tom. Interesting. Not multiplayer Tom, but like multiplayer comma <laughs> Tom. Stardew Valley multiplayer mode seems to be coming along very well. Eric Barone creator of Stardew Valley, has previously talked about adding multiplayer to the game on several occasions. The most recent update about the future pegged it for a beta release in early 2018. We're halfway through January and already Barone, I assume that's how you say his name. It's probably Baroni. Baroni. Hey, Baroni! Baroni sounds better. Okay. You go, hey, what's up, Mr. Baroni? Has more to share. It's not, it's not an update per se, more of a teaser. The designer shared a screenshot showing multiple players in the same game from a recent play session. The four players were using land, and it sounds like Stardew Valley and multiplayer will be a very active experience. And this is from Concerned Ape on Twitter. Uh, there's a screenshot. But it says, four players, Stardew Valley land party at my house. It was really fun. Still needs some work, but the underlying network code is solid. Being in the same room and yelling at each other about what to do, or if anyone has any stone, is great fun. Can't wait to share this. Same sounds like local, sounds like local mm. co-op. But it could be just because testing. Yeah. Which, is, which is weird to have a land party. Uh, though we're no closer yeah. to date, even for the beta, it's good to hear the progress being made. Hopefully the PC beta is coming soon and fans will be able to finally get their hands on it. It's I a cool idea. I have not played enough Stardew Valley or any Stardew I've Valley not to play- be able to tell you whether I would give a shit about it. I've not played game. it at all. I know I would love this game because it's a farming... Do you remember uh, Harvest Moon back in the day? Yeah. I used to play the shit out of that. This always looks to me more like one of those uh, like Farmville on Facebook yeah. that yeah. it does. Like, you know how much I got into Farmville <laughs> on Facebook? Fair enough. I was one of those people that was like, hey, I said, you, like, give me, yeah, my come on. All about that. I hated, like, people hated me because of it, but mm. no, I. this is one of those games I've intentionally avoided because I know it will suck my time, and I should just pick it up and play it because it can't hurt. Yeah, it can't Maybe hurt. Said, but wait, wait till you get your Switch and then do it then. Or then on PS4. With you. Yeah, or on PS4. I may not be getting, who knows when I'll get a Switch, Tom? That's a good question. Uh, but no, I'm excited, especially if it brings multiplayer. If it's online multiplayer and like me, could you imagine us trying to run a farm? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. It would be well, me yes, yelling at you. No. Be me, <laughs> be, be me yelling at you. Yeah. I feel like you would go Gordon Ramsay on me again. Yeah. Yep. So, that's our, our details. That pig. <laughs> Sorry, that you was get, a really bad you got, you got any, impression. You got, got any stone? <laughs> so, our details this week. PUBG hit 3 million on Xbox. Faye is coming to Switch on February 16th. Former Drive Club and MotorStorm devs open Wushu Studios' new sci-fi That's IP. That's the most exciting one for me. Yeah, I, there's I really... It, it, I was trying to find more. Uh, yeah. Stardew Valley multiplayer. That was kind of That's kind of cool for me. I found that Someone asked me in a forum. I posted uh, our podcast in the r slash uh, indie games forum. And a guy said, uh, what are the details? <laughs> he said, what's with the details? What are the details you have to add? Because like, he didn't understand the title mm-hmm. of the podcast, so I had to explain it to him. And I'm like, this is kind of how we break it down. But for those of you that don't know or have ever wondered about the title of the podcast or maybe didn't catch the first episode. I didn't know it. Tom had explained it to me. Please add details is a pun on an internet meme. That Put is the picture up behind us if you're Alan, watching. Please add details. Uh, where basically, I think it was Hitman, where the, there was this dev that uh, someone had like left a message for him, basically telling him, "Hey, you have to add some detail here, like to, you know, before you finish the game." And Alan did not add the details, <laughs> so instead, when it you, was Hitman. Yeah, when you went to uh, whatever that thing was, it would say, "Alan, please add details," which is just so funny that like uh, developers kind of, you know, that's a giggle for them. And we thought since it was an indie game show, and that's kind of like an indie game dev thing to do, that was funny. 
uh, that we would call it indie. Please add details. And then the details are just the news. So that's why it's called that, in case anyone was wondering. Oh, God, there's End so many memes. End of my story. So many memes. Don't type in Alan, please add details into... Or do it, because you might get some I'll interesting memes. I'll put some up behind. It'll be fun. Some good memes. <laughs> Moving on. Spotlights this week. We have two of them. Mm. You mentioned one earlier, PUBG. I'm going to start with mine, though. Go. It's going to sound like a really bad porn, but it's called Gang Beasts. Hello. Uh, Gang Beasts, the best way I can describe it is a beat em up with shitty physics, shitty controls, but it's a lot of fun. Okay. So it's one of those things where, like, you're the, the, the overall game, there's, there's, uh, there's multiple modes, but there's three main modes you really play. Mm. Um, one is you beat your friends up, knock them off the edge, you move on, and then there's a score to win. So it's one through eight stars, whoever gets that first wins. Second mode is there's a soccer mode. Okay. Where you are legitimately just playing soccer All with right. people. That sounds uh, fun. Or in your country, football. Is it fun? Uh, we didn't play it because we had three people and oh, we okay. felt it would be unfair. Okay. Uh, the third mode is, I'm going to call it cooperative. I don't remember what it's actually called. But basically, you just have waves, so you're all working together okay. to get through the waves of the enemies, and the enemies get larger and stronger and so faster. So they're not the, the enemies are not like generic things like you. There's not just like the it's AI not the blob. versions. No, of you. there's there's features to them. Okay. So there's you start off with little little tiny like I'm gonna call <clears> them like minion looking dudes, and then you get this big buff guy in a suit that looks kind of like Mr. Incredible, and that's where we got stuck. We couldn't beat Mr. Incredible. He was too strong for us, but. Where this really takes off is we played it, so I had a game night, and I had people over playing it with us, and everybody that played it, it's one of those games that everybody wanted to continue to play. Okay. It wasn't one of those where you're like, okay, I'm done. Hooks in. Yeah, it was, so we started off, it was me, and I'll say some names they won't know, but you'll know, me, Dan, and uh, Ebony played it first, and of those three, Ebony has the least video game experience. And uh, she's the least violent. Yeah. Dan just fucking is amazing at video games, I've learned. No matter what he plays, he's good at it. Okay. Uh, so he killed us. But it was one of those things like, there's one there's one level that, uh, it's called buoy. So you, you have three pieces of ice and you have a buoy that you can grab onto. And the buttons are literally, you've got R1 is punch, L1 is grab, uh, square is kick, X is jump, circle, and this is on PlayStation, obviously. Circle is headbutt, and triangle is put your arms up to grab. Okay. Like, put your arms above your head. So what you could do is you could grab somebody and lift them above your head if you used that. So L1 plus triangle will lift them up, theoretically. Didn't know, it did work for me, but Dan fucking did it every time. <laughs> so it's a, it's a battle arena. Last one to survive the stage. It's like a mini game in Mario Party. And... It's really funny because the physics are so janky, but that's how it's made. So you're like these jelly looking people and you're you're going along, going along, and we learned the headbutt knocks people out. So when you not you wanna not you wanna headbutt somebody, knock them out and knock them off the edge. The the fun though comes in where you panic and you start pushing buttons. So there's one time uh, we were on I think it was a skyscraper or something. I was so, no, we were on a truck. So there's the map where there's two sides, you're going down a road, you have two trucks you can jump between. And I'd fallen off the map underneath the truck and I grabbed on, and I'm trying to get back up onto the map because I need to, because I'm going to die otherwise. So I'm pushing the X button, trying to hop up, and all of a sudden I just go, whoo, and flip up to the top and I made it because the physics just like freaked out for a second. And it was one, <laughs> like things like that, or like I got stuck in the water in the ice. So it's almost like level. Goat Simulator in terms of they left in some of the jankiness for humors. So, yeah. yeah, but it also, but it doesn't feel like it gets in the way. I mean, it does get in the way to a certain. Some some fights last longer than they should, uh, but just because you can't do. It. There's one level that you're on the top of a building it has a little bit of a lip, so knocking somebody off that building is a pain in the ass. Versus the other levels have railings that break, so it's just a fall. Gotcha. So that's the only issue I had. I would say with like the physics going on that you. When it came to getting in the way but of the game. But I guess, game. you know, you want the game to be longer. You don't just want it to be someone comes in, throws you off a rooftop, job done. Like, you want it well, to it be Well, it a, never was really like that. Well, it never was really like that. It never really was like that. Okay. But the level design is unique. So, like I said, buoy we played uh, had a three piece of ice and a buoy. You had a rooftop that had a secondary level and it had a glass thing that you could throw people through. You had two elevators side by side that would go up, and they would just change height levels so you could jump between the two. And this is and you can break glass, uh, by the way. Local co-op. Yes. Okay. I don't believe it's online at all. I hmm. think it's all local. That's a shame. Um, you had a subway station. You had a uh, furnace-looking thing where you could throw people into fire. You had a like I'm gonna call it a meat grinding pack factory, which was the most disturbing one. 
Because you can grab. So people you up. well, you throw people. So on the on the sides, and there's holes in the middle of the map because you're on like a catwalk style thing. Mm. There's these grinders just going around, and if you get somebody in there, you see them just slowly get pulled in, pulled in, pulled in, and they just disappear. And you're like, "Oh, that is that is wrong." <laughs> I mean, like there's no there's no blood or anything. Yeah. So I I would say it's kid friendly, kind of, mm. minus that. But PG thirteen. Yeah, it's it's yeah. one of those things. I would say PG because no blood, no nothing. It's just you you're throwing it. It's no different than Toy Story where they're fucked with your heart when they took them down the conveyor belt and we're gonna burn the burn the toys. Like mm. that's that's about what it is. Um, Spoilers. Or Toy Story. Yeah, Toy Story 3. I'm not seeing it. Yeah. Well, now you know the, the part where I almost <laughs> cried, and I think I, I... I knew the ending I was in the theater. been talking about it I was in the years. theater, and I think I actually said no. Like, I don't talk during movies very often, unless it's holy shit, or what the fuck. <laughs> like, those yeah. are my two phrases. But when that scene came on in the theaters, I think I was with my brother. I can't remember who I was with. It had to be my brother, because we go to movies all the time. And I was just like, no! <laughs> like, this legitimate, like, are you fucking doing this? Like, you can't kill these these characters I've loved for so long. They didn't. Spoilers. <laughs> They're alive. Okay. We're making Toy Story 4. That's true. So. Um, but yeah, this game was a lot of fun. It's it's local co-op. It's a lot of fun with Party. I've not done single player yet, so I don't know how that would work if it I brings an AI. or the create a character is pretty interesting. Oh, yeah! I forgot about that part. So. We made everybody create their own character because you had to. So my character was actually Rick from Rick and Morty. So I made Rick because I found it and I was like, ooh, I'm going to do this. And you can change your skin color as well, like each match. Uh, Ebony then made Morty. So we had Rick and Morty fighting. And then Dan, we called him Burger Hat because <laughs> he had a great big burger hat on his head. And uh, the, yeah, the, the creative character is probably my favorite part. The only the only issue I have with it is some of the costumes don't go with everything. Like, there's like Dan had the burger hat, but then later on you could put a shirt that had a hood on it and it takes your burger hat away. Hmm. I wish you could have the hood with the burger with hat. With the burger hat. So I mean, things maybe. like that. But that that's something you could fix on an update though. Yeah, well most games do that anyway. <laughs> like if it depends on how it's designed. But the design of the clothing clothing's really awesome. Everybody had a unique character. It was your character. You can obviously go in and edit and switch them. The fact that they had Rick and Morty was really, really interesting. I don't know if they licensed that or if it's unofficial. I'm not sure. I think it's probably unofficial. Yeah. Rick and Morty guys are just like, they don't give they a don't shit. They don't care. Yeah. They're like, yeah, sure. that's funny. Why not? It's, yeah, it's funny. I mean, I feel like Justin Roiland would be like, yeah, it's funny. Yeah. So, but yeah, the creative character was probably, was a lot of fun. We made sure everybody did it. Um, so they had their own character and you learn about people's personality pretty quickly. Like I said, Dan with his, the burger hat, poor Dan, because his hat's like, so his head's probably... The equivalent to size on the screen, probably the size of a a pea, you know, probably a, a small grape. But the hat is like the size of, I'm going to say, like, a tea plate. <laughs> like, it's, 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 it's very okay. badly proportioned to his head. So can you, like, but if you, someone's wearing clothing that's large like that, can you, you grab onto the clothing? Yep, and it can fall off. Uh. So he was sad because we were doing a fight one time and I punched him and I punched his hat off. Oh no. And he couldn't put it back on until the next round. Like it does you can't pick it up and put it back on. So he was like, No, my burger hat and then that was my my, my strategy the whole time going forward is just grab his hat. <laughs> Distract him with the hat. But it was it was interesting because like we had three people playing at a time because I only have three controllers. And you'd gang up on people. So like Dan was winning, so me and everybody like, Okay, I'm not gonna attack you, you don't attack me, we're gonna get Dan and so we can win. It still didn't work, but uh, they also have unique trophies. So one of the ones I found was again on the buoy level. You're like, maybe I can climb up here. You get one for climbing up onto the onto the top of the buoy. Um, there was one where if you fall into the furnace, but don't fall in the furnace, like you fall but you grab and you jump up, you get out. They had a bunch of like unique things based on the level, which I really like. It's things you would do on accident that become trophies. Right. It's like, like you're not Those are in, the most fun. Trophies. Yeah, you're yeah. not intentionally trying to do something. Like, oh, so. Gang Beast, 20 bucks. I think I picked it up on sale. And it's worth pointing out that there is supposedly uh, VR coming to it as well. Now, we don't know yeah, what that I don't care like about that. in terms of, like... Because VR, obviously, you know, it can enhance a game, but a game like this is almost like a weird thing to include. So, uh, but, you know, if it turns out just to make the whole experience a little bit more kind of fun and you can see around the skyscraper and people falling down and stuff... Might be if they had a if they had a VR specific <laughs> level where you can go around things, that would yeah, be cool. That'd be sweet. But you couldn't really do that though if you're playing multiplayer because you're controlling the camera unless it has a share screen separately for everybody else. Mm. I don't know yeah. how that would work. But yeah, I recommend it. It's a lot of fun, especially if you have people to play with. Again, it's local only uh, that I saw. 
So keep that in mind. But you can have up to, I believe, four players. I'm not 100% sure if it's more than that. Four, I'm gonna yeah. say, I th- want to say four. Seven, like four. I said, we played we played three because that's how many controllers we had. And everybody enjoyed it. Like, me and Beth were yelling at each other at one point. Like, I know you guys listening don't know who Beth is, but we are very competitive people. We both played sports. We both, like, when she knocked me off, she got up and started cheering. When I knocked her off, I go, fuck you. That's how you do it. Like, mm-hmm. like shit like that. We're just like, it's... <laughs> You're competitive. You're not there cussing out a female. Uh. Yeah, it's fine. She did the same thing back. Yeah. But like, I don't know. It's it, it was a lot of fun, and even if you don't know how to play video games, button mash. It's one of those like it's. It reminds me a little bit of Smash Casual Brothers. Friendly. Yeah, it reminds me of, of Smash Brothers. Like you can get really good at Smash Brothers and like know what you're doing and like destroy people, or you can button mash and hope for the best. Yeah. And that's kind of what this that's game how is. That's I play Smash Brothers. So yeah, that's how I play a lot of times. I do I. When I play Pikachu and I play Mario, I know what I'm doing, but everybody... Uh, and Link a little bit, but everybody else, I'm like, I don't know. So, cool. that's Gang Beast, PS4, Xbox One, PC. You can pick it up anywhere. Soon to be PS4. So, yeah. yeah. All right, so let's break this time. This is a doozy. So, um, this game, we've been joking about it for weeks now because it's, it seems like there's some news concerning it every single week. And How it's doing amazing every it's, time. Yeah, I mean, and we have to talk about it's it. It's broken many records. Because it feels like... It feels like it's been one of the most successful indie games of all time. Um, I would say it's probably the most successful indie yeah, game, other than Minecraft. Definitely, it's definitely up there. That's why Minecraft so, probably is. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, it's been a hot second, but we, uh, you had the, you have the Xbox that was um, graciously donated by uh, one of our viewers, uh, Mr. Degrado. Uh, thank you for that again. Uh, I actually picked one up recently uh, of, with an interesting story. Do you mind if I tell the story first? Go ahead. Okay, so I uh, used to know a guy, and I won't say his Somebody name on camera, but I used, to, I used to work with this guy who was obsessed in Bitcoin. And we used to make we all we all made fun of him for it too. Yeah, for cryptocurrency. Now he's left it And uh, you know, it's like I still like I still like basically I would argue that it was too volatile to uh, to ever really take on because it wasn't really real. It was like you know, it, which is. Kind of the truth based on trends. It goes up, but and again, comes if down. you think about it, money's not really real either. I mean, no. we we yeah. gave money value. It's just paper. Well, it used to have um, the gold gold standard as well. Right. How it uh, so anyway, value. so we would debate cryptocurrency for a, for a long time in in our, our job. And uh, one time, he owed me money for something. I can't even remember what it was now. And for a laugh, he gave me Bitcoin. And he said, uh, "I'll give you eleven dollars, but can I pay you in?" Bitcoin. Yeah. And I was like, fucking, I guess, you know, like he did it to piss me off because he knew how much I hated Bitcoin. <laughs> so he makes me download this app called like Coinbase. And then he like, tra- like I have to create an account. He transfers this Bitcoin over. And like I had already forgotten what my login was and everything within like a week. And then I just forgot about it. And then like that's been in the news a little bit lately. Bitcoin, you know, is doing pretty well. So I was like, man, I wonder if I still have that Bitcoin from <laughs> uh, from what my friend gave me. Uh, so I find the app, uh, and then you I find like, your change login. my username, <laughs> change my password, get all that shit done. And then I log in, and I have like 250 260 bucks in there from, from this 11. $11 that he had given me like a year ago. It's like the stock like market. A year, right? So I'm pumped, and I'm just like, wow, like that came out of nowhere. Uh, so but you're like, let's spend it. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, this is free money. Like, I don't really need to put it on anything like important right now. And I really kind of wanted an Xbox for PUBG and to like to for us to stream and stuff like that. And plus, you know, to play Cuphead and a couple of the exclusives. I like having all the consoles because I feel like then I get the full experience of the generation. And Xbox is always the last one I pick up, but I, you know, now I had the money to pick it up, so I picked up an Xbox. I have one now, uh, which means that we can play PUBG together. That's yes. that story. Uh, I just thought it was funny to include that because literally eleven dollars turned into an Xbox, um, and then <laughs> Xbox and PUBG, <clears throat> yeah, and PUBG, and a uh, six well, month gold membership too. Oh, uh, you didn't buy it new though, did you? Because they did. Because they have the deal pre-owned. going on if you buy a if you buy a new one, you get PUBG for free. Yeah, I did it pre owned, but uh, but I got a two terabyte hard drive. So yeah, pretty pumped. Yeah, so um, I love the way Xbox does their hard drive system. By the way, mm. it, it's very very it's way smarter than Sony. Right, in my opinion, just the just the interface of it because they know what they're doing there. Uh, I'm still probably going to get an external at some point. I'm already kind of running low, and all I have is really? Xbox 360 games on that. Well, not low, but like I'm like I have like I have a 1.3 terabytes I have a left from a two. I have a 500 gig hard drive, and I, I don't have any 360 games on there though. I delete. I, I only have the ones that I play. Yeah, you know, I delete shit that I don't play, Tom. I don't like that. Why? You Are you really ever going to play them? That's this yeah. comes from them. So yeah. I log. I don't game. know if you know this, but I logged into your account during game night to see if there's any VR games, uh-huh. and I went to your library. 
And our friend Hayden and Dan went, holy shit, he's got a lot of games. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he's probably played maybe a quarter of them. No, I get, I get them for the show, or I get them because I think they look interesting. And I, but I how many have you played? You have over lot. you have over 400 games in your library. I have more than that, but yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you have 400 games in your digital library. Mm-hmm. Yep. How many of those have you played? I don't know. A lot of them. Well, how much is a lot? Because I feel like your definition of a lot fucking, and mine's different. I'd have to go through and be like, yeah, no, yeah, no. Honestly, like most time, I like, think it's been a quarter. I don't, no, May, oh, maybe fifty percent, maybe. No, yeah. there's no way. Anyway, <laughs> um, I might not have played it more than once, but I did play it. <laughs> so yeah, so um, so PUBG is a game that we <laughs> can now play anyway. <laughs> Side tracking, and we played it on stream twice. I played it by myself a little bit too. For I played a little bit by myself too, um, and some other friends. And I gotta say, I, I originally, when I first started it, I hated it. Like, I played two rounds by myself, third person, because the first hadn't been added at that point. Well, you can play in first person, but you're in a third person map. Yeah, not, not everybody's yeah. first. Yeah, I didn't switch it over, because I, I, I didn't like it. Like, the first person was too janky, and I couldn't aim properly, and it just made me sad. You know how much Call of Duty I play? Like, that's my benchmark, and I was just like, this is well, way the fuck off. You so also, I had to you also have to remember, though, and keep saying this to you, it's, I, I think the text thread I kept saying was, it's early access. Yeah, and I know that it gets better, because I've seen... The complete 1.0 version. I've seen PC. how smooth and beautiful it is. Which still has is, issues, but. Which makes me happy because I know that at some point we're going to get to that place where it's just like perfect. But anyway, it's I, not perfect. I didn't understand it because I didn't understand like. Well, I didn't have any. There's not really much in the way of like a tutorial, is there? They expected you to watch it on YouTube, Tom. Yeah. No, I didn't do that. So, because <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be. I, when we would say go to yellow on our stream, you're like, what the fuck does that mean? There's a yellow marker I'm putting down. Go to that area. Yeah, I <laughs> wanted to be ignorant to it because I wanted to just go in blind and then just like form my own opinions. And I mean, I've obviously seen like a few clips and stuff, but I never like watched a whole playthrough. Do you ever see the clip of the dude killing somebody with a frying pan? No. Deflecting a bullet? No. Yeah, I gotta send you that one. He, you can deflect the bullet with a frying pan, and he blocked the shot and killed this dude. That's amazing. It's the the um, developer came out, and this is the chance of that happening is like point zero 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 one percent. So, um, so yeah, so I mean, we 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 played it, and after the initial couple times of me failing really badly, I actually played it with a group of people: you, Hayden, Ben. And Shout out to Hayden I, for yeah, helping thanks us. Thanks for Hayden for helping us. But I really, really started to get into it and really enjoyed it. And, like, I think it was because I had someone, like, basically holding my hand and saying, like, here's what you need to do or here's what this means. This or, is know. why going into games blind is not always good. True. I always go in. So, but uh, it's not our fault so, because there's no well, tutorial. But one thing I – yeah, but you could have played beforehand. So one of the things I do, like, before I stream or before I record a video, I always go in to at least learn controls. But then it's not as fun. That's not true. I think it's more fun when someone doesn't know what they're doing. In no, a stream. I think it's frustrating because you're yelling at them, especially in the team based. I was yelling at you because you didn't know what you're doing, and it was just kind of it was like, well. Eh. But I I think learning basic you're controls. If you time, anyway. if you ever do you ever watch like the React channel hmm. like Fine, Fine Brothers? Hmm. If you ever notice when they play a video game, it said they know the basic controls, nothing else. That to me is fun because they kind of have an idea of what they're doing versus not knowing what they're doing at all. Well, again, I kind of blame the game for that because they never showed me the basic controls. But they expect you to learn it as you go along, not on a live stream. How am I going to guess to double tap L to aim? You can also see Who them in the, in the menu. You can go to. The, I went to the control menu. I couldn't even find a fucking menu. Yeah, you push the start button. No. Yeah. No, I couldn't find it. It was that was. It you was, press and it hold. Took me to select. You a press and hold the start or some shit. But without well, no, when you're in the game. Anyway, uh, anyway, so you. we played it, and uh, it was it was a really good time. I love the looting aspect of it. I love the number fact two. That you never know uh, what you're gonna get, and that like I also love the fact I love the beginning scramble as well. Like that's become a favorite part of mine because you know when you when you. For those of you that maybe haven't played PUBG, and I know that's probably not that many of you, but there, you know, it is Xbox and PC exclusive, so you have a PlayStation, you haven't played it. So basically, um, to begin with, there is 100 people. You all drop out of a plane. It's a very big plane, apparently, to hold 100 people. And uh, the plane just basically flies across this map. You all jump at whatever point you feel like jumping in the map, and then you have to parachute down and immediately scramble. You scramble to get inventory. So you... Uh, Hopefully you, a gun. Yeah. So you're and looking bullets. to be able to defend yourself immediately, but everything else is kind of cool too, so... I, lo- I love that one game where we both... Or no, you got all the guns. I got all the fucking attachments. It's like, I can't find a gun. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you drop down, you find a place to loot, you go in there, you look around, everything is always procedurally generated, so it's not like if you go to this one place every time, you're always going to get this type well, of gun Well, the, the loot's procedurally generated, yeah, the map is, I, yeah, the map is not, I mean, yeah, yeah the, the, loot the loot is, is procedurally generated, but the map generated. is not. 
Um, there there are tendencies for like vehicles to be in certain areas. Um, yeah, but other than that, they yeah, probably, that's the, probably more just like uh, that. So it doesn't spawn in the, the so, yeah. so it doesn't spawn in the ocean. Correct. Um, so anyway, you, you find your stuff, and then the the kind of the hook of it is that it acts like uh, like the movie Battle Royale, I suppose, where they close off sectors gradually in order to force the fight. So rather than everyone just like <laughs> deciding to Hanging live, out. yeah, in, in their house somewhere and then just be peaceful, you are forced to fight because there is a gigantic storm that kind of comes in and immediately kills you if you're not inside the circle as the storm is coming in. So uh, it starts with a very big circle, gets smaller, 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 until whoever is remaining from the initial 100 people is are basically compacted into a very small area. They're within like 100 yards of each other. Yeah, and, something and like that, you have yards. to be the last man standing. Uh, and then you win your chicken dinner. So that's the principle behind uh, PUBG and how it works. Um, so the actuality behind it is kind of a different thing because you can choose third or first person. Um, there, if you're in third person, you can still, I think, switch to the first. first person by pressing the R1 bumper. Um, but it's not that easy to kind of like slickly move between them. That is one thing that it does have against it is the controls are not great yeah uh, the controls are definitely not made with a controller in mind no so you have to like double tap the and they've L. come out and said that yeah they've they, they're like we were aware we we're trying to figure out how to button map everything they definitely need to work on that more but yeah but you have to like double tap the l stick to aim down the iron sights which is kind of weird because you're like no one's used to double tapping that that also means that you're almost always going to be slower on the draw than someone is like pre-aimed uh you basically the the actual like if you're going up to a house and opening a door you kind of feel like you're maneuvering oddly in front of the door there's no smooth motion to it everything is just that little jank factor to it it almost feels a lot like friday the 13th uh the movement mm -hmm. and like you know like it feels like it feels Stiff. janky but still fun you know what i mean like it's not like you can't control your character you absolutely can it just it doesn't feel smooth and it feels very like raggedy and kind of like like every but everyone's suffering the same fate i suppose um so there is that um and then there's the fun factor and that you know when there's a group of people as opposed to you by yourself is good like you can still play it by yourself and really enjoy it because you can get lost in that and world you can also easy. the other thing too is you're when you're by yourself you you can do whatever you want mm -hmm. you don't have to, you're obviously not trying to coordinate with somebody else true you don't really have yeah you don't, you have, don't have anybody to answer orders. to but at the same time, like if you're by yourself, then you're you, by yourself. You so if be there's more a group aware. Of four people that are coordinating, you are less likely to survive that outcome. Uh, there is a way to choose it so everyone is just lone wolf. But yeah. you know, there, there, there's options available. But you know, when you're by yourself, you almost get lost in the experience because um, you're so busy just kind of looking around, looting, trying to find the best gear, trying to move on to the next area that it feels almost more realistic. I think playing it like first person by yourself, that, like as to that game world and the idea of that game, um, than if you're like third person with all your buddies, that feels more like GTA or something. You know what I mean? It just feels less realistic to me in that area. So yeah, I like. I like third person because you have. I don't just like it. I'm just saying, like I the shoot, way it feels. I like feels shooting in first different. person. It is like two different games. Yeah, like playing third versus first is like two different games. Um, and obviously, people play third a lot of the time just because you have a bigger field of view. Right. Exactly. That's uh, why you do it. Which, which we're okay with, but like I don't like shooting. In I third do like person, that. So. I do like that they have a first person only mode s uh, server. Yeah, 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 yeah or yeah. servers. Because that way everybody's at the same Everyone's thing. at the same handicap yeah. and no one gets to see because everyone has the horse blinkers on, right? Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, but it's like... And audio cues are very important to that game. Yes. Way more than I had ever considered that they yeah. would be. But yeah, audio yeah, cues are we're, huge. We were streaming and I was like, there's shots to your left. You're like, how do you know that? I'm like, because I can hear the, the gunshots. Like, yeah. Um, direction is very important to that game. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I don't know, there's just something about the team coordination that's really enjoyable. There's something about being the lone wolf and kind of just feeling a little bit like Rambo and trying to survive all the way to the end. I mean, and your play style is entirely up to you yeah. because you can just go balls out with a group of friends, get all the big guns quickly, and then just drive around recklessly and shoot anything. People drive moves. around in cars constantly. Right. Like, and then you feel like you're the you know the warriors trying I'm to avoid a, all these cars on the road. I'm a sneaky person right. in that game. Uh, sneaking I'm a, I'm is a, the other I'm one. I'm a crawl. Option. I crawl everywhere. So you're trying to find, like, you know, scoped uh, rifles or preferably a sniper rifle. You're trying to keep your distance, stay in the shadows, keep prone. Um, and there's a lot of players that play that play style as well. So it's this sort of awesome mix of high action and high stealth at the same time because ultimately you have to survive. And in some instances, that means going crazy and killing everyone. In other instances, it means keep, keeping your mouth shut and staying low and letting everyone else kill each other for you to st swoop in at the and end and get the everyone. last kill. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's a really unique uh, kind of experience. 
Uh, at least it was <laughs> uh, until the clones came out. But uh, I, yeah, I really enjoyed it, and I, and it grew on me to the point where now it's probably my second most played game behind Call of Duty in this particular time period. Um, it's so jarring going between the two. You're missing, you're missing a big thing that I don't think you've really touched on yet, but I've done on it. No, go ahead. Uh, loot boxes. There mm. are loot. We, I feel like we should need to say there are loot boxes in the game. They are. You get them. There's two ways to get them. Right now, I don't think you can buy them on Xbox, but I know you can buy them on PC. Uh, it's for clothing. So you can go in with different clothing. Cosmetic only. Yeah. You do get, uh, I'm going to call them battle points. I don't know. What, it's BP. So I'm assuming it's battle points. Yeah. That you collect each time. So you get more for killing people. You get more for surviving longer. Obviously, different different things give you different amount of battle points. But the problem I had with the crate, and I don't think you noticed this when we went in, the first crate that I got was 700 battle points. And then, they go up. then it went up to 1,400. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh. Because that, because. To me, I get like, I'm sure if you're good at the game, you get like a few hundred every time. I get like 60 to 100 every right. time. And it's, it's just a like, slow roll, yeah. for sure. Because I, I spent my first 700 and I got like a pair of fucking boots. I get and a, I was like, great, 1400 for the next one. Yeah, I like, got a t shirt. I just didn't really give a shit at that point. I was like, okay. I mean, and it is kind of a little bit of whatever. I almost wish that they let you keep what you find in world. Like if you find Minus the a, guns. Well, yeah, no, yeah, and minus the guns, but the clothing. Like, yeah. if you find something cool in the world. The trench coat. And, and minus, like, anything armored, like helmets yeah. and, and police vests. Dude, when you find but, a uh, level three helmet and police vest, you're like, I can fucking Rambo this shit. Yeah. Uh, but it's a ton of fun, and, you know, the the kind of the, the interesting side note to all of this, of course, is that it is an Xbox exclusive. Uh, so, Co- Xbox console exclusive. Correct. Uh, currently. And, you know, it is supposedly going to reach its way to PlayStation uh, at some point, which will be fun for everybody. But I feel like, um, I feel like, A, Xbox fucking needed that game. I yep. think uh, I, it I sold units. It sold I mean, uni- it I, mean I bought one. one for it. Uh, that to me, Cup- Cuphead were the two. Like, Cuphead was the first one that did it. And it's funny because these are <laughs> the thing that sold an Xbox two was, indie games. was two indie games, not a fucking first party. Because you think, think about it like with Nintendo, you buy a Nintendo console because of Mario, because of Zelda. Like, you buy a PlayStation because, well, I bought it because of because of PlayStation friends. has both. PlayStation has AAA exclusives and some indie games, yeah. and uh, like yeah. you said, most people have. I I bought it. Be- I bought it because that's where my friends were. Uh, also, the whole Xbox One launch was mm-hmm. a bit. Jan- if Xbox One did not have as janky of a launch as it did, I probably would be an Xbox guy first, mm. PlayStation guy second. Mm. I'm looking back on it. I still think the UI is better on PlayStation. It's because you're used to it. Yeah. Well, I had a 360. It's not like I do, I'm not it's, aware. But, but yeah, but they they so completely messy. changed it. I think it's messy. They though. changed it to the to it's the like, Windows it's 10. It's almost worse. Oh no, I love it. Really? Yeah. Once you get used to it and know how to navigate, once they brought the so I hated it until they brought back the menu to hold down the Microsoft, or push the Microsoft button, have that menu. That's what saved it. Because before then, it was like holy fuck. I got to go like I got to go back out to do this to do that. Now it's just. Pat, type the uh, Microsoft button pulls up that menu gotcha. so I actually like it a lot more um, I could see as somebody who doesn't who hasn't used it very often and is used to 361 compared to it and then obviously PS4 is I just think the cross media bar has always been like a pretty smart idea I know, don't, don't like the PS4 one because the game organization is to me is dumb yeah well not the whole you long yourself, row if you do the folders and everything. yeah but it's still just Organize. You can't pin things. Microsoft, you can pin things, which is a big deal I for me. Got that far. That's what I'm saying. See, you don't um, even know all the all the things. Well, it. again, learn tutor- it, Tom. Tutorials, man. I, you know, <laughs> help me out. Um, but yeah, so so PUBG. Uh, I think PlayStation players should be very excited for what's to come. Uh, hopefully, it has less growing pains with it than it did with Xbox, because by then, at least they'll have an idea of how it works on console better. They still need yeah. to tweak it a little bit, but I mean, essentially, Xbox and PlayStation play very similarly in terms yeah. of controls. Um, yeah. Have the exact it would same just buttons. more be like optimization stuff. Uh, I wonder if you can button map. Like if you had a, if you had a, a elite controller for the Xbox, I assume you could button map eventually because you could because you have the things on the bottom. Could you imagine like reloading by doing this mm. instead of holding X? Yeah, uh-huh. like you hold down. That's uh, that's such an advantage. You well, squeeze that's it. probably why they wouldn't do it. I mean, you still have to hold it down probably. Yeah, yeah. It would take the same amount of time. It just from a finger where your finger is because then you'd have never have to lo- uh, leave the right stick. Right. So. So yeah, just thinking, just thinking strategically. Really, really fun premise. Really good game. Uh, still, definitely a long way to go on Xbox before it gets anywhere close to its PC counterpart. I mean, in terms P- like of we said earlier, PC was in, in early access for nine months. Yeah. We're going and on a month been, now. Yeah, it's only been a month or so for Xbox. So you know they got plenty of time. Um, but I think it is 
deserve it of the title system seller mostly because of the procedural nature of it i think that i was concerned i would get bored of it really mm -hmm. fast but th it definitely has that one more try feel to it like every time we've streamed and you've been like oh, i want to go to bed after this i'll be like no i want to <laughs> chicken dare like i, I was going to stream on sunday i was exhausted right. sunday. uh which i'm grateful that you did <laughs> But yeah, uh, wait like till the new map happens because yeah. that the, what I really like is somebody who I have friends that played on PC all the time. And what they said basically is the new map instead of the current map. And I don't remember the name of the current map is the the first one they put in. Um, it's very flat, very you run from I think it was uh, Ben telling us the new map also is very hilly, very barren. So it's easier to be spotted. Easier, yeah. yeah, it's easier to be spotted. So, and so getting exciting. from point A to point B takes longer because you have to go through mountains and stuff. So, right. I don't know. I'm. It's. I like that they have the variation. I want them. Do you think the next one will be like a snow map? I would think it's gonna. It's gotta be like worlds, isn't it? Like like Mario worlds almost. Like let's have the green you one. Have, well, you have the, you have the forest. One. You have the desert. Like the and you snow have snow. One, yeah. Yeah. A, a water level. I would love that. Um, no, no, don't do water. <laughs> that would suck. An island, like an island. Ooh, an island level. I like a bunch of islands. Yeah, scattered. like a cluster of island with a few great. bridges between. You're like boats to. Get and some of them, game. some of them have bridges. Some of them don't. Yeah. So you might have to swim. Ideas for you, PUBG guys. PUBG Corp. Um, I feel like they've they probably have thought of a lot of this already. <laughs> so. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, I highly recommend it. Thirty bucks uh, if you get it now. Thirty bucks potentially be sixty when it goes full. They, I don't yeah, know if they've. But as as per that. usual with uh, early access, if you get it early, you get the full version for nothing. So well, not well, nothing. for whatever you paid for the yes. original. One. It's not free uh, unless so you yeah. buy a new Xbox One. Then it is free for a limited time. Mm. So uh, yeah, that's that's my spotlight. Uh, I'd like I'd love I could talk about it longer, but honestly, like I feel like we talk about it a lot. I just want it'll to be back in the news next week. Don't worry, right? <laughs> and uh, but I, I really did have a good experience with it. And I, and as a primarily PlayStation guy that only picked up the Xbox for uh, that and Cupcake, I'm, uh, Cupcake, Cupcake, Cuphead, I am uh, pleased to say that at very least PUBG has me uh, feeling like I made a good purchase. Cool. So there you go. Cool. Moving on to our question. And this was one, uh, I was watching our friend Azili, Deb, who is now partnered on uh, Twitch, stream yeah, the other day. For her. Yeah. And uh, it made me think, because this is a game she streams all the time. I want to play. It's not on a platform I own, which makes me sad. So my question is, what indie games do you want to play, but due to platform limitations, aka not being on one you own or have access to, you can't? So do you have one? I'll let you go first. Yes and no. So here's the thing. Because uh, yeah. the only we have a lot of consoles between us. We almost have all of them, right? We have a lot. Um, we basically have everything but a PC. Yeah, and that's so that's kind of my answer because I have uh, but PCs where all the indie games decently are. powerful MacBook. Uh, but again, Macs are not really designed for gameplay. Um, so, I, I, and the thing about it is. Is like so. For example, Counter Strike mm -hmm. is a huge one for me because I can play that. I mean, I, I have it set up on the Mac to play, but I have to use like the keyboard and mouse that I bought especially for it, which are weird plugging into a laptop, and um, it just the you know, it plays all right, but it doesn't feel like how I imagine it would to be would to be on like a high end ultra graphics yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then there's games like that played better on PC than they did on console, like Subnautica, uh, those types of experiences that come out. I also think there's a whole lot of games um, that that become legendary first on PlayStation. I'm uh, sorry, first on PC. On PC. And then come over. And yep. My, I'm all over the place with words today. First on PC, and then like they they if we're lucky, the console peasants get a sniff at it at some point. Um, PUBG being a prime example of one that you know maybe consoles were never going to city see that city game. skylines is yeah. one. Uh, but yeah, so I I'd say I don't know if there's necessarily like one particular franchise I can think of um, that I would I mean aside from Counter Strike uh, that that I would love to see on m more of my primary consoles. Mm -hmm. But in just as a in general thing, I think I would prefer to experience a lot of those games on, on console PC, or on pc um because i know they're better i'd prefer to play them on, a lot of them on console yeah because i'm not because that's controller scheme i'm used to and yeah and that's that's and the you downside can, you can, to that and people are going to say in the comments that you can plug in a, a controller to a pc which i've done i played gta 5 on pc for the longest time i plugged a controller and played that way but that game 
that doesn't make that's not a big issue if you have a controller versus PC mm. uh, versus like a first person shooter. Yeah, big difference. Like if I, I've I've thought about jumping into Overwatch potentially on PC and seeing how that goes, but the speed, yeah, that, and accuracy, that game, yeah. Whew. But also, so I uh, watch lots of Overwatch World Cup and lots of Overwatch League, and I'm like, I can do that. No, I can't. There is <laughs> one other console that I don't have that I uh, that I kind of wish I got to experience a few things on, and that's a 3DS. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have a 3DS, and I know there's a ton of titles on that that I would be super pumped to play. Um, so that's one that I don't know at this point if I would consider picking one up still, unless I Just find one for cheap. Yeah. You know, because um, a I have the Switch, and b like uh, you know I. When it comes to like media stuff, like I prefer the more hard edge stuff generally, like the the stuff that was available briefly on the Vita. But um, but yeah, there's a lot of like exclusives to 3DS that I kind of wish I could play. Gotcha. Uh, but I, I by name I can't uh, just Nintendo ex- first yeah. person stuff, first yeah. party stuff. Cool. Yeah, and your Planet Coaster. My my big one is Planet Coaster. Yeah. Um, because I love Roller Coaster Tycoon. I played the crap out of that growing up, and it's like you said, we I own. I own, I have in my house an Xbox One, a PS4. <clears throat> I have a Mac that I used to boot camp PC games on and played for the longest time, but the problem I ran into there is I hated doing the dual boot thing. Yeah. And then every time I logged into PC, I had 35 million updates because I hadn't been on that side for a long time. It takes up hard drive space. And I was like, and that's back when I played a lot of PC with friends. Uh, I don't play nearly as much now. I play a lot more console because, again, it's just way more fun for me. Um, I have the opportunity to play these. That's where I played Ark. That's where I played a lot of things. So, like, I guess it's kind of me just complaining that it's not on console more than I can't right. play it. But it is a hassle for me to get into a PC environment with the setup I currently have. But Planet Coaster, watching Deb play pa- Planet Coaster every time, because, you know, I like to build shit. <laughs> like, mm. I'm a I'm a crafter and, and a half. a lot of those sort of god games. Yeah, because uh, they, they work way better on PC. Like, City Skylines, it's, is- it's funny because, yeah. like, City Skylines is on console right now in Xbox and PS4. And I was, talk- I was actually talking to Deb the other day about it, and I go, I, th- I don't like those games on the consoles because the control scheme, as somebody who is used to the PC, if I didn't know any different, I'd probably be fine with it, but somebody who's used to the PC and played it on there and played all my Tycoon games and like that on there, like that's how I experience it, and that's how I know it to be because it's not an action game. It's planning shit out, do this, do that. Okay, I got to put a building here, put a thing there. Camera's a bit wonky at times because I'm not used to doing the swing thing with the the keys, but you get it figured out as you go along. Well, the and other, the mods, the mods say, is a big thing. Yeah, you nailed it. The other thing is that uh, mods uh, would I mean, be good to get a hold of, but also there's also like these PC exclusive remakes that people do of games. Like Black Mesa is basically like a project where they tried to remake one of the Half Life games, and mm-hmm. like, is is better Portal is Portal stuff. on console? Yeah. Okay, because I have because I have Portal One and Two on well, PC, it was origi- but I never played. Originally, it. yeah, it was part of the it was separate, but then when they put it in the orange box when they released that uh, for console, which had Half Life uh, episodes One and Two, also Portal Anti. Because I've never I've never played Portal One yeah. or Two. I have them both on PC, but I've never played them because again because again it's on PC, not Mac. The one the version I have, so I was like, right. oh, can't do it. So yeah, so, Hatred as well. I wanted to play Hatred. I haven't been able to play that yet. That was um, a very controversial game. That's one of the few games. Play. That's one of the ones you can't stream on Twitch. Mm-hmm. You yeah. can't stream that. Can't stream now. You can't stream uh, that and Honey Pop. Honey Pop is one of them oh, right. that got big there for Honey a while Pop, that you can't. Or whatever. Well, Hatred for those of you that don't know is a game where basically you're a guy that decides to kill citizens in a town for no reason other than you want to kill citizens yeah. in a town. So it's got that kind of like, mm, like there's not really the morality. a morality. You're just like a random active shooter <laughs> in this situation. So yeah, ethically it's a little uh, shaky. But you know me, like I like yeah, that I'm type of sick shaky. shit. So I, uh, you know, the weirder and kind of more controversial a game is, the more I want to play it. And uh, so that's one that I, I picked it up for Windows, even though I know I don't have one, just in case they ever removed it. Yeah. Because I'm like, at some point, I'm going to be able to play this game. It's in my Steam library. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but I've never been able to play it. So, again, that's another one that's a big one. Hatred was a big one. Yeah, there's, I mean, like you said earlier, there's a lot of things. Like, I watch a lot of YouTube people who play games that are not, have not made their way over yet. And I can't think of them off the top of my head, but... There's a lot of games I'm like, I wish I had that. And they come eventually, but then at that point, the hype's already died down because I've watched so much yeah. of it. They're like, well, do I really want to play well, that? Yeah, already... there's that sense of being first as well because if you, you watch YouTube way more than I do, yeah. but when, and you especially watch YouTube gamers more than I do. So when you're watching like Jacksepticeye or Markiplier or whoever play these games first, then you kind of lose your, your you know, uh, whatever you call it, your trying to find, juju. I'm trying to find. For it. 
Juju. Your juju. I, I was. There's, there's an actual French word I'm trying to think of, and I, it's just my my mind is. Uh, melted I'm trying to think of the one. Re- oh, like survival games. Like I'm a big survival game Sounds fan. Those are all yeah. on uh, all on PC. There's yeah. very few on console, and it's yeah. because they don't work well on console. Yeah. Um, yeah. Things like that. I'm trying to see what I've gone through. Oh, Raft. It which is. They've announced it is coming to console, so I'm excited about that. Always wanted to play World of Warcraft. Never got a chance to play that. Yeah, I played that for like a week and a half. It was me, uh, Jesse, Wheezy, and Sarah uh, mm. played it, and I quickly lost interest because Elder Scrolls Online mm. is way better and on a platform that I prefer. <laughs> so, yeah. I th- I will say some of the like the MMO stuff I'm sure was way more fun on PC mm-hmm. because because the environment the, the and cr- being able to type cr- to people, yeah. and hang out and stuff like you yeah. know you can't y- you have to have like, voice chat on yeah. Uh, the keyboard, the keyboard in PlayStation is uh, jank. Not good. Doesn't not a thing. And the one, even the one that's on the Xbox controller that you can plug in is kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah. But so. yeah, uh, mostly PC stuff. Because uh, we own everything else. That being my choice. What uh, what about you guys? What is a, a indie game that you want to play but haven't been able to play because it's not on a platform you own, or what's one that we should check out that yeah. we may not know about? I yeah. mean, to me, like I said, Planet Coaster, anything crafting. I love, that's why I love Raft. Give me Death and Destruction. Yeah, Death and Destruction. Crafting and happy things over so, there. Death and Destruction. Minecraft, blow up shit in Minecraft. <laughs> did, I tell, did I ever tell you the first thing I ever did in Minecraft? What? So my brother, we were playing at home on his Xbox 360, I think. Maybe. Maybe Xbox One. I don't know. We're playing We're playing on assist console. And uh, he built this giant tower thing. And I was like, so how do I spawn in blocks? He's like, why? I was like, because I, I want to build something. He's like, oh, and he told me, and I was like, ooh, there's TNT in here. <laughs> so I get I get some uh, TNT, start building a TNT wall, and then guess guess what? I get some lava, because lava on TNT goes, Poof, and I might have blown up half the world. <laughs> He's like, why'd you do that? I go, you you told me how to spawn him in. I'm going to blame you. That was, yeah. It was, was great. A rookie mistake. Fault. Yeah. I literally put, up. like, the game froze because the frame rate couldn't keep up, and, there, right. and then when we were done, it's just a giant crater in the middle of the world. I was like, oops. So... Yeah. But yeah. All right. This has been Indie Please Add Details, episode 20. Like I said, next week we will be Legal. officially allowed to drink. This is our weekly. We do next week's episode drunk, see how that works. No. No? I have to drive to and fro. That's true. So this is our weekly dip in the world of indie news and indie developers. We talk about our excursions through the week, and then we can top it all up with a co- topic of conversation that you can join down in the comments below, or you can hit us up on Twitter at level 2 gamers STL. Or Discord, link in the description. You can also see our lovely faces and our studio and gameplay footage and other exciting things behind us at level2gamers.com, which is the video file of the audio file that you might be listening to. Or, like I said, you can hit us on iCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, if you want to just listen to our lovely voices. Uh, I do that sometimes. I put it in the car. People think it's weird that I watch myself. But I also say it's also a quality thing. Like, yeah, it's a mixture of like I'll watch maybe like twenty minutes. Yeah, just to make sure there's I'm nothing. I'm with you on that. Like, like and, it, and and you learn from watching of things you do. Yeah. Like, I when I lean back, it gets quiet. When I move in, it gets loud. Uh, yeah, it's a quality control. Things thing. like that. I don't watch. I watch the reviews that I do sometimes to make sure I didn't fuck up any edits or anything. But, yeah. Uh, mostly when it comes. to I the love podcast, watching a YouTube video where know, somebody so. knew clearly they put a take in and then they redid that take but they forgot to take the take out that was bad right there's somebody the other day i watched and he's like blah blah, uh, blah 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 and i was <laughs> like oh you screwed that one up uh but yeah we'll be back with episode 21 next week we'll be back tomorrow with codename morpheus episode 23 i believe 23 23 uh which is our vr podcast check that out and then on friday we have episode 53 of the official level 2 podcast i've got an interesting topic i got to talk about uh on there excited. so i'm excited you excited i'm excited exciting topics no well it's not exciting it's half just half of it's going to be exciting yeah the, show. the other there half's going to be real boring yeah the first half is the exciting part because it's me yeah so but thank you guys so much for watching we'll see you next week and as always welcome, welcome to, to the, the second, second level, level. bye, bye.